we go. All right. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. So welcome to the Internet of Production Alliance's monthly community call. My name is Sarah Hutton. I am the lead research and community engagement for the IOP. And this month's call is going to be focusing on the Open Nowhere Awards round two. We're going to be hearing some of the stories uh, of from the process of the round two awardees from each of the three teams once we get into the call. But first, we're going to go ahead and get started with some community updates. And I'm going to hand it over to Andrew Lamb to get us going on that. So Andrew, go ahead, take it away. Thanks everyone. And um, I'm excited about today's uh, call, but uh, I will have to drop off early, I'm afraid. So I'm very sorry for that. Best of luck to the speakers who are sharing today. The internet of production has been quite busy over the last few weeks since the last community call. One of the things that we've been working on is a project called Innovative Manufacturing in Africa, which is supported by an awards program. And the awards, we selected through the awards process, nine makerspaces to work with. And they have invited their members to participate in distributed manufacturing trials where a number of health and care uh, devices were produced and so you can see on the photo there on the screen um, the three different types of products they were a writing aid a test tube holder and a, a fracture model of a, of a leg bone to help surgeons practice and they were made by uh, about 20 makers across these nine maker spaces. And we've learned a lot from the experience of trying to enable distributed manufacturing. Um, we'll be publishing more about this and there's a showcase coming up as well, which I think uh, we'll come on to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. And so you're all invited. Uh, on the 14th of December, this is not our next community call, this is an additional mm -hmm. event. On the 14th of December, where we'll be showing the results of the Innovative Manufacturing in Africa uh, project. It's an opportunity for anyone who's interested in makerspaces in Africa, in the business models of makerspaces, the impact of makerspaces, in distributed manufacturing trials and this sort of capacity building of makerspace managers to come along and hear what we've been doing with the nine makerspaces in South Africa, Ghana, and Kenya. And the, the community call that's coming up is going to focus on one particular element of that, which is the business models catalog. And we're going to be launching a website. So the, the December community call on the 12th of December will be a launch. And Anna Lowe has been working with uh, makerspaces, not just in uh, Africa, but also across Europe and around the world over the last few years. And has drawn on her expertise and a, a, a small team of people to begin to codify existing and also potential business models into a catalog which will also be shared on a website that will be launching on the 14th on the 12th sorry on that december, on that december webinar so the the links are there please do sign up for those i'm going to be if anyone's in washington dc next week i'm going to be attending the global digital health forum this is a slightly unusual event for me to be attending in the sense that it's not really about production. It's not really about the maker movement. But what, I'm, what I've been looking for for some time, and I know a number of people in this community have, is a place where we can begin to find funding for the 
distributed production of open source medical health and care devices. And this particular event, I'm going to the Global Health, the Global Digital Health Forum has lots of the kinds of donors that we're, I'm hoping to interest in open source medical devices and investing in that area of work. So do please let me know if you're in town or if you have any contacts that you're looking to make. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going along rather speculatively hoping, hoping to be able to make some good contacts for the sake of the alliance. And then this, this I did the podcast and I, I'm quite embarrassed about this because the first few minutes of this the podcast is it's all about me. But the they wanted to know a little bit about my story on what the Mementa podcast calls the, the digital thread and, and you know how it's sort of woven together to develop my current role with the Internet of Production Alliance as the chair of the alliance. It's a half hour podcast. The link is there. And if you haven't learned much about the Internet of Production, where it's come from, at least from my perspective, some of the ideas behind it, please do have a listen. One of the things that we have been able to do through the MAKE project, which is the African European Makerspace Ecosystem Project, a three year project funded by the European Commission is take part in the Volca network. And Volca, it was a project to try and develop residencies, but also to allow makers from across Europe to visit each other's maker spaces. And it's now quite an established network, and they did a wonderful event in Slovenia last week where it was all about. You know, residencies, it was all about um, national makerspace networks. It was about getting ready for future events like the Fab Lab conference, which is coming to Europe in 2025. Um, and there was quite a lot of work on the Volca network itself. So it was a, a great opportunity to learn about European makerspaces and the state of the European makerspace network. And I'll be sharing some notes on that through the MAKE project uh, in the next few days, in the next few weeks. Sarah, this one was one that you attended. Sure, sure. Glad to chime in. I attended SOCAP Global. For those who haven't heard of SOCAP, I hadn't been before. It's um, a collaborative between an or the SOCAP organization and the Sorensen Impact Institute. And it was an event that took place in San Francisco on the West Coast of the U.S. a couple of weeks ago. And it brings together uh, foundations, funders, venture capitalists, and philanthropists with humanitarian organizations so that these philanthropic endeavors can have conversations about how to best invest their money to make the greatest impact for humanitarian good. And so, for example, um, some of the, the keynote presentations um, came from the Rockefeller Foundation, from different entrepreneurial activities that are happening, you know, across, uh, across the globe. There's a very strong representation from Africa. And actually, I, I talked with folks from Afrolabs while I was there, uh, made some, some strong connections with folks that uh, continuing conversations in the weeks following. So I'll be providing updates likely in subsequent community calls or on the community forum. Thanks, Sarah. Now, we realized there was a spare day between the event on the 12th and the event on the 14th of December. So we put an event on the 13th of December as well. So you can have three days of events with us. This is actually hosted by the African Makerspace Network, again, as part of the MAKE project, the African European Makerspace Ecosystem uh, project. The, um, the idea with this call is that we want to explore policy solutions. So it's uh, an invitation here to you to come and attend, to contribute 
um, and to, to listen to experts on how we might shape uh, the policy frameworks, both in Europe and Africa, and they're going to need to be quite different, I think, in each continent, of how we shape those policies that might support a more thriving and robust makerspace ecosystem. So do please also put this event in the diary. And uh, one thing I, I want to update uh, you all with, because some of you have been working with Jessica quite a bit, is that Jessica yesterday did her last day with us and today started her maternity leave. And uh, so huge congratulations to Jessica and her family. It, it's the next few months are going to be very special for, for Jessica and her family. We're hoping to have Jessica back working on the MAKE project uh, in May next year. And in the meantime, uh, Barbara Schack, her, uh, her role will be changing and she'll be taking over as the manager of the um, MAKE project at the Internet of Production. I will be uh, wrapping up the in, uh, innovation, innovative manufacturing in Africa project. So the two projects that Jessica is managing is now split between Barbara and myself. And I hope we all, yeah, all wish uh, Jessica the best of luck as, as the baby on my way. Okay. And so I think then, that's oh, it from updates. Yep. So yeah. I just quickly want to say for, for those of you who have had Open Nowhere Data Awards, for those of you who have done a lot of work on mapping machines, I, I really want to thank you for all of your efforts because a network, the internet of production doesn't exist without machines being on the map. So I really think you're contributing to the new paradigm of production that we're trying to build here. I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to be able to join the whole presentation, but I'm eagerly looking forward to uh, watching the rest of the presentation on, on my plane home tonight. So good luck with the presentations. Thank you all so much once again. And thanks, Sarah, for allowing me to join for a few minutes. Thanks, Andrew. Safe travels. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks so Bye. much, Andrew. Nice to see you. All right, so as we, we move into the, the discussion of the Open Nowhere or OKW Awards, I'm going to turn it over to Antonio to talk a little bit about where we got started and what brought us to round two of the awards and where we currently are today. Take it away, Antonio. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you everyone for taking the time to join to this call and talk about your experiences. So this is the open aware effort to collect data that comes from communities and different ways of collecting rather than just adding information that's available online. The idea of making the data worse was to also give the chance to other communities to create new data based on the community that they are uh, located. And so, Could you please show the next one, Sarah? Yes. So this is a, a exploration to find different ways of knowing where to make things. And as this statement is simple, it is uh, very complex in the practice as you, you can uh, find out uh, during this exercise, like, the idea is to have like a snapshot of the what's happening right now in different communities and how those people connect to each other, what is the most useful information in one side or the other, and what are the different ways to collect this data. So during this data wars exercise, we have focus and in knowing what's actually happening. And so there have been different approaches on how to collect this information. One way that, for example, Education for All is done and humanitarian open street maps teams is like to go and organize communities, train people and go surveying by 
door by door to different businesses, different people, and try to get this information. And the other approach has been to develop online forums and distribute these forums in different ways by email or by web pages. And the idea of making these things, like for example, in the exercise by Spirit is to map the existing networks in Greece. And another one is like querying internet search engines, like go and make, make a search on where to find a CNC, where to find a 3D printer, or where to find a makerspace. And all of these trends have different efforts, different works, and different types of uh, organizations, and it takes time to develop all these things. One of these relies a lot on people, another relies a lot on, on, on automation programming. So, but at the end, we, we, what we are trying to get is reliable and, and quality in the data. And so when we say reliable, we mean like real world data and data we can find if we have a location, we go there and we find what we're having in the, in the database and also quality in the way of if the data that I am having right now, it is describing in an enough detail what I need to know in order to make something. And so overall, once we have all this data collected in these different ways, we need to find a way to concise all this data to, to make a way to format everything in a way that one is compatible to the other. That's a very difficult task too, because surveying has longer answers and we need to find ways to automate or to go by one one and auto classify these answers and extract the useful data from that. So at the end we have like to have like insightful and helpful data. And so I want to start the conversation around that with the different teams. And so thank you so much for joining. And I think the first team is education for all. I'm mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Antonio. And for those who haven't met Antonio before um, on this call or who may be watching the recording later, he has been you know, leading, he's been working very closely with um, Max Warda and has been leading the development of the, um, the open manufacturing map. And so some of you may have seen that, that map in practice or have seen it you know, shown as an example of what do we do with the data you know, once it's been collated, once it's been cleaned up. And so, as Antonio mentioned, we are going to move in next to hear from the teams themselves, starting with Education for All. I'm going to turn it over to Oluwatobi Fakoya, who um, is going to be talking a little bit about their the team's intent um, for mapping manufacturing capabilities across Nigeria. You can go ahead and share your screen if that works for you at this right. time. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sarah. And thank you also, Antonio, for, for the overview. Okay, so the name of our, our team is Education for All Initiative. And I was assigned by the the team lead in person of Akwede Bolaji to, to make the presentation. So what I'll be briefly speaking about is the general overview of the, of the project, the data collection process, the questionnaire design, overview of the project and recommendation, obviously. So Antonia has said an overview of the Internet of Production and Alliance, so I wouldn't be dwelling more on that. But so for us as Education for All Initiative, the goal of the data collection is to map out the capabilities of local manufacturing organizations across Nigeria for global awareness and patronage. So 
speaking on the data collection process, we had advertisements on several platforms to recruit volunteers in addition to our already established team of volunteers. So having done that, we had more than 80 applications, like more than 80 people applied for the tax. So what we did was that we checked through each volunteer's profile and we added them to a, a WhatsApp group. Then we held both individual and group discussion with the volunteers just to get to know each of them, you know, their experiences and their commitments as well. So at the end of the day, having 80 people applied, we were able to pick just 40 volunteers out of the 80 volunteers that registered for the program, for the for the process rather. So the way our questionnaire was designed, the questionnaire we had, it was grouped into four sections. In the in the in the questionnaire, also we had a place where the volunteers will actually give their consent, the, their names, and you know the questions that needed to be answered, the compulsory ones, the ones that they could leave. So the the grouping of the question, we had the facility information, facility status, access type, machine information. So for the facility information, we had the name of the facility, the contact the machines used in the facility, the location of the manufacturing facility. So there was also an avenue for them to input the, the GPS, just so that once you type in the coordinates, you get the exact place. The fa facility status, if they're affiliated with any organization, the hours of operation, the access type also, we had the certification maintenance, then you know the machine itself, machine information, the name, the maker, the model, the raw material that is being produced, that is used for making production, the end product and the required skills. The image you can see beneath is the cobalt tool we use, and you know, just a snapshot of how the question we asked the volunteers, how it was. So now training of the final volunteers, if you remember earlier, I said we actually recruited 40 volunteers. So we now moved them into another group. We had a, a group initially, we moved them into another group. And the essence of this is just in case some people wanted to drop, we could go back to the previous group pick from them. So we had a, a new group, then we organized a three day intensive training for them on how to use Kobo tools, how to approach the facility, what they needed to know about the facility, you know, in case they get to a place and they are being asked questions, what they can tell about OKW and Education for All initiative. And so we explained the project to them thoroughly. So what for the verification? Now, one of the things we made the the volunteers to be aware of is that once they send data to us, we need to verify the data before we actually approve of the data. Once a data is not verified, then it can't be approved. So that was what we did. Now, how what made this a juicy offer, what made this interesting was that there was remuneration for the volunteers. Okay, W, they were magnanimous enough to give us 2,000 US dollars. So it was this money that we used to provide remuneration. So for one of the things we did was that for every data point, that means for every facility that a volunteer got, the volunteer had the opportunity to get a certain amount. So for instance, if a volunteer could get 10 facilities, could go to, to 10 facilities and provide reliable information as Antonio, Antonio rightly mentioned, then after it has been verified, then we pay such, we remunerate such volunteer. Not only that, we also give them T-shirts. Yeah, t shirt was provided to every volunteer. For instance, the t-shirt I'm wearing was one of the t-shirts that was provided to the volunteers. 
as you know as to compensate them for it now another thing we also want to do to make it look more authentic is that we have truly made preparation provision for certificate for the volunteers however the certificate is still in the pipeline and the, the money that was also provided you know we use it to do some logistics transport to how we get the t-shirts available to volunteers and some other things that was what the fund that was allocated to us was used for now for the facilities the number of facilities that were reliable having verified from our hand was 15 and the the project commencement the project began around began june 19 and the duration was for five weeks at a stretch and there's i actually have a link here for the volunteers feedback but because of our time i wouldn't be playing that for us now with respect to the recommendation that we've got we want we want a quicker response to email in future correspondence and we also want there should be would we would recommend that there is an increase in the funding to to motivate the volunteers because as they brought as they showed us the data via Kobo to and you know we verified and we paid them you know they were they were gingered they it spurred them to want to work more so having more money then you know they will be able to work more also one of the things we would recommend is that there's a letter of introduction from the lead organization to ensure transparency so when a volunteer is going having a letter of introduction not necessarily the hard copy the soft copy you know they can show them then the facility can say okay this is genuine this is authentic yeah and another recommendation is that we have still we we still love to collaborate with OKW in future. Yeah, thank you so much. But I wouldn't be ending this without appreciating Sarah, without appreciating Antonio. You guys, you've been wonderful. When you were in Kenya, even with your busy schedule, you responded to my WhatsApp mail. So thank you very much. And that will be all from Education for All Initiative. Thank you so much. Are there any quick questions that folks have before we move on um, to the next team? I have a couple that I've written down in the notes, but I wanted to give the opportunity if anybody um, has a quick thought or question, feel free to unmute or type it into chat. Okay, I'll ask my quick question then. I absolutely agree with the recommendations that, that you provided in thinking about the, the letter of introduction from the lead organization, you know, as an artifact, like that's that's been done now. And so we have this artifact that could be used by future teams, right? So one of the questions that I had for other artifacts was, this intensive training that you did for volunteers, is there documentation that could and, and would be shared openly for teams that are using, looking to use Open Nowhere for future citizen science data collection endeavors? Yes, yes, we, well, I wouldn't say we have a, a proper documentation for that. And the reason is because no, we do. We do have. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not written. But we mm. had video. We had video really? when we when we were. Mm. We had videos when we were. When we we're teaching them how to use the cobalt mm. tool. Yes, mm. we had. Video. We recorded. So, mm. but you know, it's a large file which I cannot. But we mm. could actually send it to you yeah. for your period or your consideration. Yeah, yeah. But while doing while doing that, we mm. had video. We had video because some volunteers couldn't meet up with the meeting at the scheduled time. Mm -hmm. So we gave them the opportunity to watch the video. Mm. Prior to, yeah. yeah, so we did. Thank you. There's another question from Antonio. Do you want to go ahead and unmute and ask? Yes. Thank you, Olova Tobi. So the question is like, 
during the surveying process, did anyone have a reaction towards the question of, oh, how many machines do you have? What kind of machines? Were they concerned? What, they, what was their general reaction to them? All right. Thank you, Antonio. Yes, yeah, so it was some had some had concerns about it and some some one of the things that happened was that we told them to go to places they're familiar with so that when somebody gets to a facility the the manager or somebody has been seeing this person around this side so it's not safe the person is a stranger there so that was one of the things we considered while recruiting volunteers to the, we didn't want somebody in a first state to come to another state so that it wouldn't be as if he's spying or something. Yeah. However, some people had, had some people had reactions and they said the, where they got to, they were concerned about showing us a letter, like a, a letter of introduction to attest that you are not just coming from, we don't know you. And so that our our privacy is being preserved, you know. So that was one of the things that happened. And they told us that if a letter was available such that it has the mail of OKW, you know, the contact person, then they could go online, check, okay, this is this is legit. And we can allow somebody to get into our facility to ask. Yeah. So that was it. It was some hard concern and some, but basically we told them to go to places within their vicinity. Wonderful. Thank you so much. For that You're welcome. For that. You're welcome. All right, great. Thank you so much. I think we will move on um, to our next awardee. If you are ready, Stefan, to, to talk about your project, or will you be doing a screen share or... Ah, oh, there you go. Yes, I hope I'm audible and that yes. uh, everyone can see this presentation. Yes, absolutely. I'll try to put it in presentation mode. Okay. That looks great. It, okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. So happy to be here. Yeah, there are so many things that we also relate with the previous team concerning our own experience, like participating to this round two of the OK. Um, so I'm happy to present the experience on our site here in Cameroon. So yes, the presentation will go as follow. I would like to start with a small context about the projects, uh, our own objectives, the strategy and the various activity that we implemented as part of the project. I'm also talking a bit about the progress and also some key findings about our experience. So as background, I think in Cameroon, basically we, we have 10 regions. Talking about the manufacturing capacity, basically it's pretty much con uh, concentrated in two, a region in Littoral and Center, which are the uh, most developed uh, town in, in the country. Uh, so that was the initial information we had from our various activity and network uh, on the field. But during this particular experience, we uh, noticed and observed that there are new uh, points, a uh, new organization that emerged from various regions. And that's why, as we, can, we are going to see, as follow our objective changed a bit from the initial target we, we set. So in terms of the kind of structure that present in the country, we have uh, formalized organization or judicial innovation hubs uh, and maker spaces. So when I say formalized, it's like, like clear structures, NGOs, or other organizations actively involved in uh, making and other forms of, uh, form of capacity building uh, supported by uh, other organizations such as GIZ or Orange Foundation and others. Uh, we also have uh, local companies and privately owned businesses also having the equipment, but they don't really have the same kind of focus and aim than like maker spaces, for example, but they do have the capacity to produce. We also noticed that we also have a lot of instrument and equipment in technical schools and some professional universities. So this is kind of the landscape around 
the capacity in the country. As I mentioned, it's pretty much concentrated with the new spaces that uh, we uh, observe and work with. So yes, the objective was actually at first to map the machinery production in the two uh, main uh, uh, cities, but uh, we also changed it a bit. Now we were targeting uh, pretty much the whole country because of our network, it was quite possible and the kind of mechanism we're using to, to collect uh, the data. And then we also use the opportunity to strengthen the network and collaboration efforts that we were working on for many years now. So for the methodology, really, really, really focused on four things. Uh, the very first one was communication. Uh, we noticed that it was a paramount element of uh, our strategy. Uh, we really, really had to communicate a lot about what we wanted to do, about the projects, like the objectives and everything. And we did that in uh, events, gathering, you know, the makerspace community or like digital innovation ecosystem in the country. We also share a lot through social media and our own personal network. We use online survey as data collection tool. So we are so grateful for the trainings we receive on Kobo Toolbox. It's a great tool because it allows collection of data even uh, without internet. Uh, it's, it was one of the, the great uh, points for the application. Uh, we also uh, had to uh, like test the survey uh, upon completion with some uh, organization. And uh, from the feedback we received, we did some refinement uh, to publish the final version. Uh, also, we had, we had to do in-person visits and interview, like actually go on the organization because for some of them, it was the best way to collect the data as we, we are going to see in the next slides. And also like to wrap up the projects. We also saw the need of an in-person seminar that is uh, to gather key stakeholder in, in, in Yaoundé and talk more about the project detail, objective benefits, uh, collect data on the spot and also like present the survey and, and, and continue the work basically. Talking about the progress, so we had to design a survey and validate. So we are so grateful for the team, Sarah, Antonio and Max uh, for really providing great feedbacks. It was a time consuming process uh, but you also had a lot of fun in learning and how to use this, this great platform. As I mentioned, we shared the survey and got feedbacks that enable us to optimize and have the final version. So that was done. Also, we had to communicate. So for that, we needed to design some social media content. So we had flyers design, you know, content design that we are going to share on social media. We relied on WhatsApp mostly because it was uh, proven to be the most effective way. And uh, context specific to Cameroon, we had to do everything both in English and French uh, because uh, language barrier was one of the main limitation we had as we are going to see. Uh, so this is just an example of the design we made to talk about the projects and then for people to contact us. So, so now, about the in-person seminar that is scheduled to take place in December because we had so, so many for people who were interested, but it was clashing with uh, different activities. So December was the best slot, basically. That's why we have it so late. But the objective is really to gather close to 25 key stakeholders among all the organizations we approach to, as I mentioned, talk more and like really uh, make a network around these this projects and keep uh, collecting data. So in data, we share the survey with three organizations. That's why uh, where we noticed that online survey alone was not a very good way of collecting data. So we had to change our strategy from the observation because we shared a survey. It took so many time for people to respond and also we had to remind constantly. So we also had, had to add another approach. So basically in, uh, in person visit and we're basically printing, printing the survey and then filling it uh, manually with the people. And it, it, it has proven to be the best way because they were able to ask us questions about uh, things that they were not understanding. And it was kind of the best way. 
uh, and also we approached and worked with uh, close to 20 organizations from our network. It was quite easy because I mentioned that we had some ongoing effort to create a, a network of, of innovation space in Cameroon. So as I mentioned, we found new hubs in, in different regions. Uh, so in overall, we noticed some reluctances uh, to relate uh, with what uh, a team in Nigeria faced, like about uh, the kind of trust, about people were really interested to know who we were working with, the objectives, uh, our motivation behind this, but uh, being part of the network and having done some implementation and, and some event already on the ground was kind of easy for us, but we noticed that. And then I mentioned that we have to use mixed online and in-person data collection, it proven to, be, to work based in our own context. So, uh, so sorry to interrupt you, Stefan, but it looks like Nathan had his hand raised. Did you want to ask a question real quick? Okay. Nathan? Hey, so, yeah, hey. So, uh, I yes. Love the work that you're doing. I just, I had one question. You were talking specifically about while you were kind of manually filling out this form with people, you were able to ask answer a lot of the questions that they had while they were while they were going through this process. I'm curious if you were able to capture any of those questions because I imagine a lot of people are going to have the same questions and being able to kind of preemptively answer those for future people might might make this whole process easier. Yes, we have. We do have a survey. We can share the the like all the questions like how a survey looks like. But mm -hmm. I'm well talking about the process here. People were more comfortable like. I just come with the printed version. I tell you, okay, first question, we fill it together. And then they mm -hmm. were able to ask more. But when they fill it online, they're like, if they want to know more about this particular part, they, they don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in a sense, that's uh, what I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But the survey is available. Uh, and I think we are happy to share the link. Uh, that will be done, definitely. Great, the thank you very much. Have, yeah. yeah. So Good yes, to, thank you. Thank you for the question. To wrap up, um, uh, I was uh, talking about key findings uh, about our own experience. Uh, so as I mentioned, physical contact and trust uh, was very important for people to share their data. Being part of, like being known already by this organization uh, was very interesting and easy for us to get the data. Uh, and then communication, we had to really rely on communication because we had to remind people about filling the survey, be clear on specific objectives and the advantages for them to, to feel because we really had to put together a very appealing way of approaching them so that they also see benefits in doing that. Uh, so that was some of our learning. Uh, so also not the experience enable us to know that uh, there's a growing community of maker in the country like we had identified some new spots uh, in other regions that's why now instead of like like limiting ourselves to two city we kind of are interested to map the whole country now and also to make a network because being close to that we also the fact that everyone shared the same information was also very interesting for people because they know that, okay, they can have the same information from other organization. And that was a very interesting way for, for them to use uh, and, and, and get value for the work we were doing. Um, also, the, the opportunity uh, really was a good one to strengthen the already ongoing effort for the community building. So the recommendation, uh, in addition to what was said in the previous talk, I think the language barrier would be good if, for example, the map after uh, finalizing everything, if we can have some kind of translation, because uh, it was very interesting for us to translate our survey, for example, into French. And also, since we also had to share about the events, it would be great to have maybe some material already talking about the projects in advance, some pictures that we can easily add to our own support to share uh, more efficiently. But for that, I think it's just time constraint that enable, but I know if I reach out to Sarah or anyone, I could have those information beforehand. So those are some of the recommendation uh, and uh, what uh, the experience was uh, looks like in our own case. So I will stop here and happy to answer to any question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. In the interest of time, just to make sure we have enough for for Spiros. 
to present his findings. We're going to move on and hold any additional questions until after an overview of your project, Spiro. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share because I have his slides up here. All right. Can you see my screen? All right. Yep. Okay, great. So yeah, Spiros, when you want me to advance a slide, just let me know. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the project was about the mapping the manufacturing capabilities of maker spaces in Greece. I had already conducted a similar survey a couple of years ago regarding a master thesis and part of this idea about going through that again and maybe gathering makes sense there. I'm mentioning this because it, it was interesting about the process. So I, I already knew a lot of people personally, all, a lot of the makerspace managers, and it was based on trust. So this allowed us to actually conduct most of the surveys online with me just sharing the surveys and asking the managers to fill in the information by themselves. And it turned out that it worked. Uh, next slide, please. So, yeah, most of it was actually, most of the work was done before conducting the survey and discussing with Antonio and seeing what of the questions that have already been selected were relevant for this context, what should be modified, what could be considered to be sensitive in that context, and so on and on. And and then we ended up having 43 questions. And even though it was originally put in April, we actually conducted it in September 2023. And it took 40 days to collect the whole data that we have. Uh, slightly more than expected, but still OK. Next slide, please. Uh, so Greece is not such a vast country. and. I already had a list of the spaces available. So we shared this with 26 maker spaces. It turned out that six of them have been closed permanently or temporarily in between, but some you had opened as well. In the end, 15 spaces participated and only one clearly expressed no interest to have their data available and appearing on the map. The rest of them were actually very excited and are looking forward to see this happening and to see how they're going to make use of it and if people actually are attracted and come close to them, which might turn out to be also crucial for how fond they might be to update this again and again when they change uh, machinery in the spaces. Next slide, please. So, yes, the data collected is coming from 15 facilities this and we collected it for 107 machines that are going to be appearing on the map. So regarding the quality of the data we haven't actually but well having direct access to this people I'm very positive that they actually will be able to capture all of it in a good way. Even the few spaces that didn't participate in the survey they replied and they were positive to do it. So I think they might actually even do it by themselves in the future. So altogether, I think it was a success and it feels like we managed to capture most of the available data regarding the country. And um, I think the, the next step is how this is going to, going to be communicated, the project and the mapping. So it might come close to some of the projects that appeared before, like the mobility programs or distributed manufacturing projects to see how people actually have access to this one and make use of it. And so it's not just data collected that stays there, but it's actually like it's a tool that is alive and it's, it's very useful for the people to find the right spaces for them to do what they need to do. Next slide. So that's, that's about the wrap up. Uh, you have any more questions about how it's done or something more? I'm available. Thank you very uh, much. I have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Hey. So I feel like 
you know, recurring theme in all of these is trust. You know, mm-hmm. we're, mm-hmm. we're gathering data from people about, you know, the expensive equipment that they keep in their shop and, you know, demonstration of trust is really necessary in a lot of these cases. Um, I'm so thinking about this from an information security perspective, I, I'm curious if we have a plan or if we can help develop one to sort of maintain that trust and show that we are keeping this data secure and in, a, in such a way that, you know, because like, this is the kind of thing where like trust is clearly very important. And if that trust is ever broken, whether through, you know, accident or, or incompetence or malice, it doesn't really matter. That trust is lost and it's going to be very difficult to build it again. Uh, so, you know, I understand that th- this is primarily an information gathering exercise, not an information mm-hmm. security exercise, but I want to make sure that that perspective is, is kind of brought to the table. I think the question goes beyond the collection of data from Greece. So it's mostly getting the projects. I don't know if someone like Antonio would like mm-hmm. to share some more about this point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Spiros, for your insights and yeah, for you. the work you have been doing. And thank you, Nathan, for the question too. Yeah, so far, like, so we're working on a restructuration of the work and one of the key points of this that we're working with Max exactly about how we process and, and keep the, the data in compliance of the different regulations. Um, and so, so far, the main effort is just we haven't published this data that contains personal information. Mm-hmm. And the second effort is that so far we are only using information for people that agree to share this information and or that already have this available in other platforms. Mm-hmm. So they are they are in full awareness of what the, are the the connotations of having this information available online. Mm-hmm. And for designing a process, I think that that's wonderful that one of the things that we're trying to to keep on going is that for organizations that we're part of the open or, or nowhere in the IOPA is to contribute. So you know, we can have a one-to-one and set off uh, the, the, the work for contributing to design and this process. Okay, great. Yeah, happy to yeah. talk to you more about that. Yeah, sure. wanna, you know, it, it's important that we safeguard the information that people entrust us with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I can add, I can add something to that as well. Um, and some of the work that we've been doing on the some of the other projects that um, are within the care of the IOP presently, there the work is complementary. And so. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we have been exploring as a proof of concept and then proof of practice is using really lightweight open source survey tools or forms to collect data and then developing workflows um, to scrape um, any mm-hmm. personally identifying data. And I've, I've been experimenting with some, some workflows using the any data visualization and running that through and, and dumping the scraped information in uh, private GitHub repo to kind of see how that would look over time, mm-hmm. um, you know, and making sure that, you know, everything is in within compliance in our approach. And in the other, some of the other projects we work with, I mean, we advise on um, how to remain within compliance within um, GDPR practices, as well as other guidelines that are country and region specific. And so, there's a lot to consider. Uh, I think that one of the next steps is, you know, making that, and this will help with the the trust and subsequent iterations of this program or others, is to make those policies and practices more transparent, so that people can can review that content before we engage with communities. I think that that'll help to to assure yeah. them that their data is safe. That would be a great thing to get up on our website at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, 
maybe it sounds like Sarah, you, me, and Antonio should maybe, and anyone else who wants to join on this particular conversation, Definitely. uh, should set up a, a call for some time to put together next steps on this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, awesome. and, and that's, no, that's, thank you for volunteering to be a part of that call. <laughs> um, Sarah, you can also add me. Uh, excellent, to James. Oh, hey, James. I think. Wonderful. We're, yeah, we're at a, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Was that James? Okay. Uh, go right ahead. Sorry, sir. Oh, well, I just wanted to, you know, as the, you know, the, the rain on this parade, I wanted to bring up that we're about at the hour. So I wanted to be, you know, respectful of everyone's time. Not that I want to cut conversations short, but we are at the end of the scheduled time for the community call. I did want to briefly share so far as getting involved in upcoming work and the OKW initiative in general, we will share this, of course, after there's so many links and so much content to share after this is done. But just a quick capture of the upcoming meetings that for the Open Nowhere Initiative. These are posted to the community forum. The link for it is on this slide. We'll share it, of course, along with all of the community call notes um, and this recording. But the, the OKW Initiative group will be meeting once monthly starting in January. So those are the, the dates, January through May. And during that time is when, you know, we'd be discussing issues such as data privacy policies and, you know, what, what steps are coming next um, for OKW. So anybody and everyone is welcome to join. And with that, I'm going to thank everybody for attending. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording for this call. Thank you. Mm -hmm.